Hello everyone, my name is Christian Paul Ang. I'm currently taking up BS in Applied Corporate Management. And today I'll be, I'll be discussing ACOB1 Formation of Function. So my discussion will be divided into two parts, the nature and formation of partnership. What is a partnership? A partnership is a business owned by two or more individuals. These individuals are called partners. A partnership may or may not be supported by a partnership agreement known as the Articles of Co-Partnership. However, a, part a written agreement is required when partnership capital is 3,000 pesos or more in money or in property. This is also required to be registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC. Now for the advantages and disadvantages of a partnership. For the advantages, a partnership is easy and inexpensive to form and dissolve. A partnership can be created orally except when partnership capital is 3,000 pesos or more. A partnership can also be easily ended whenever there are changes in the ownership structure such as withdrawal of a partner or admission of a new partner. A partnership can also have greater amount of capital compared to a sole proprietorship because of the combined capital of two or more partners that offers a greater source of capital. Next, there's also unlimited there can also be unlimited liability for the general partners, which makes it less risky in the point of view of creditors. Now for the disadvantages, there can be limited capital raised as compared to a corporation. The general partner can also be subjected to personal liability when, er, er, when bad decisions are made by the company. There can also be difficulty in transferring ownership interest because in a the partnership, there's, there needs to be consent from all the partners before ownership interest can be transferred. Now for the kinds of partnerships. First, according to liability, there are two kinds. First, the general, general partnerships, wherein all partners are general partners. The second one is limited partnerships, wherein there is one or more general partners and one or more limited partners. Now for the kinds of partnerships according to object. First is the universal partnership of all present property, wherein partners contribute their personal property to the partnership's common fund with the intention of dividing the property, properties among them, as well as the profits which they may acquire with it. Next is the universal partnership of profits. This comprises of all profits that the partners may acquire by their industry or service during the partnership's existence. So the difference between this one and the first one is that with the universal partnership of profits, the original property contributed do not become common partnership assets. For the last partnership type, which is the particular partnership, its object are determined things, their use are fruits, or a specific undertaking. It can also be the exercise of a profession or a vocation. Now for the kinds of partners, according to liability. The first one is a general partner. So a general partner, his or her liability to third persons extends to his private property. However, for a limited partner, his or her liability to third persons is only limited to the extent of his capital contribution to the partnership. Now for the kinds of partners according to management. First is a managing partner. He or she manages actively the business of the partnership. A silent partner, meanwhile, provides capital but does not participate in the management. A nominal partner is a partner in name only. A secret partner takes active part, but his or her connection to the partnership is concealed to the public. On the other hand, a dormant partner does not take active part and his connection is also concealed to the public. Now let's head over to our second topic, which is the formation of partnership. There are also two kinds. The first kind is 
when two or more individuals form a partnership business for the first time. The second kind of partnership formation is when an individual forms a business with a sole proprietor or sole proprietorships become or are converted into a partnership. For the first kind of formation, wherein two or more individuals form a partnership business for the first time, here we can see a sample journal entry. We can see that there are two partners here, which is Rose and Quada. For the first three journal entries, we can see that Rose's capital is being credited because of his investment in different kinds. For the first journal entry, it concerns her cash investment to the partnership. For the second one, it, her investment in the form of non-cash assets. And in the last and in the third journal entry is her investment in the form of non-cash assets with assumption of liability. So we can see that Rose's capital is credited in all the three, all three entries, which makes her a capitalist partner. While in the last journal entry, which is the investment in the form of service or industry, this makes Quada a, a industrial partner. So when someone is an industrial partner, we would only need a memorandum entry, such, such as the one in the bottom part of your screens, where Guada is admitted as an, as an industrial partner with 20% share in profits. So as you can see, the difference between an, a capitalist and industrial partner is that a capitalist partner contributes capital to the company or the partnership, while an industrial partner only contributes in the form of service or industry. Now let's head over to the second kind of formation, which is when an individual forms a business with a sole, sole proprietor or the sole proprietorship is converted into a partnership. So there is a procedure in converting a sole proprietorship form of business into a partnership form of business. The first procedure is to revalue the assets owned, the liabilities owned, and capital of the sole, sole proprietors. The next one, the next step is to close the existing books of the sole proprietorship. And the last procedure is to record the investment of all the partners in the new set of partnership books. Now let's use exercise 2-3 case B as our example and as our exercise for this discussion. So for this problem, on May 1, 2019, Romy and Dick formed a partnership contributing assets with the following agreed valuations. For building Romy, 1,500,000 pesos. Office equipment, Romy, 30,000. Dick, 220,000 pesos. And for the furniture and fixture, Dick contributed 50,000 pesos. The partners agreed that the partnership will assume the 300,000 mortgage loan on building and that Dick will contribute ad additional cash to make his capital balances equal to 40% of the total partnership equity. Now let us provide this problem with a journal entry. So for the first journal entry would be for Romy's investment in the partnership. So in the particular side, we debit building and office equipment. The values are already given in the problem statement. So 1,500,000 for building and 30,000 for office equipment. Now for the credit side is Romy's capital and mortgage payable. Mortgage payable is also provided in the problem, which has a total of 300,000 because the mortgage payable is already assumed or, or rather it disagreed that the partnership will assume the 300,000 mortgage loan so it will not be included anymore in Romy's capital. So to solve for Romy's capital, we would have to add the building and the value of the office equipment, giving us 1,530,000 minus the mortgage payable amount of 300,000 pesos, giving us 1,230,000.
Now for VIX investment in the partnership. So the only, the only values given here are the office equipment and furniture and fixture. Now we would need to solve for cash and the total capital of VIC. It was mentioned in the problem that VIC will contribute additional cash to make his capital balances equal to 40% of the total partnership equity. So how do we solve for the 40% of, which is the capital ratio of Dick in, his, in the partnership? So we will use the capital investment of Romy, which totals to 1,230,000 pesos and divide it over 60%. So we would get a total of 2,050,000 pesos, which is the total capital of the partnership. Now, now, as mentioned, the capital balances of VIC is equal to 40%. So we would have to multiply it by 40% and we would get a total of 820,000. Now, our only problem is cash. And to solve for cash, we would just need to add office equipment and furniture and fixture and subtract it from total of 820,000. We would get a total of 550,000. So that's it. Thank you for listening and good luck in your exams and your finals. Thank you.